folks, it's another edition of Superhero Roundup on SourceFed Nerd. I'm Matt Lieberman. I'm Sam Basher. I'm DJ Woldridge. And this is the show where we review all of the superhero and comic book series that are on TV right now. We're going to be talking about Gotham, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Arrow, and The Flash. We're also going to talk briefly about the reveal of Daredevil from the Netflix series and, and the all the DC, DC lineups. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was announced. As yesterday. well as uh, the Marvel Captain America 3 news. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So, so we're gonna, much news. I know. So we're drowning in. So we're going to get into all that news stuff at the end, but first, I want to talk about Gotham. Get uh, it out of the way. Get it out of the way. So last week, if you if you watched our review, we were lukewarm at best on the show. It has a lot of promise, but keeps making a lot of bad decisions. Yes. I would argue that this was the best episode yet of the show, and it took some small steps towards improving itself, but was still ultimately very frustrating. Yeah, I don't, uh, maybe the best, but I don't know if that means anything. <laughs> All right, I have not, just to put it out there, I have chosen not to watch Gotham because I have no interest in knowing the origin story of all of these villains and hearing the Batman origin for the ninth time in the row. So, well, here's the good news. Yeah. If you're there for origin stories, they're not there. They're so. not there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Really, the closest yeah. thing we get to an origin story is Penguin. Mm-hmm. Sort of. <laughs> but it's so but it's so dumb. It wants to be cool because he's like climbing his way through the ranks of the underworld, but like in fits and starts and in stupid ways. Yeah, it turns out the only way to climb up the best way to climb up in the Gotham Underworld is just to survive. Yeah. You have other people die and you will get promoted and it'll be fine and right. super easy. Also, uh I still have the complaint that I have no idea. Like, things just happen within the series because the plot demands it, but there's no real sense of this being, Gotham being a real place. Like, two politicians get off within days of each other. How does that affect Gotham? How does that affect elections? How does that affect, like, well, what, how does that affect the makeup of the, like, Gotham the mob is a horrible place. Well, yeah, well, yeah I, I understand horrible, that, horrible, but horrible hypothetically, <laughs> hypothetically, it is a place where people live, uh -huh. and we live in a world where mobs and gangs exist. And guess what? They're not knocking off politicians every day, and I'm assuming there's a reason. Well, the issue here, DJ, is that this isn't the wire. This is a procedural. Yeah, but and this episode was about solving a mystery. Yeah, a dumb mystery. CMP. Uh, CL CLM. CLM. Uh, what does it mean? Nothing. I didn't even <laughs> spend any. Brain effort. There's, uh, he, they find a piece of paper. That's a C L M. And at this point, two people have been knocked off. And I'm trying to remember their last names, but it didn't matter. I'm like, oh yeah. So the third one is the mayor, uh -huh. and it totally was the mayor. But that was not, not what that word at thing meant and at I, all. Here's the thing. Comparing it, I thought about that. Comparing yeah. it to the wire is completely unfair. Compla yeah. Comparing any show to the wire but is just it, any fair. If that you show. have a show but about comparing it to 20. Four. That's on Fox. People in tw the characters in 24 are smarter than the characters in Gotham. Right. But it, that was a serialized show that treated the world very, very seriously. I feel like Bruno Heller, on some level, doesn't take the comics very seriously yeah. and is just kind of trying to make his own thing. I feel like there's a lot of hands in this stew. Like, yeah. there's a lot of people trying to make a lot of decisions. So the ultimate product is very muddled. Well, you yeah. have something that could be amazing. Mm -hmm. Because no. with the Gotham world, you don't know what it's going to be like without Batman there and the origins of all these villains, but like, if you give it to somebody who has this much power and they don't really, has Fox ever done a superhero show? Ever. As Mantis in 1998. I have, I have fond <laughs> memories of that show, but I don't remember if it's just because I was a kid at the time. Or yeah. It was actually yeah. It's good. so, it's such a big responsibility yeah. and giving it to someone like, it doesn't, that doesn't make sense to me. Well, something. It does, it's going to make a lot but, of money, but, but yeah. He made Rome. Rome was a show Rome that, was solid. that handled politics in a realistic fashion. I do think the series needs to be, decide whether it is The Dark Knight or The Batman 66 show. Because yeah. right now it's trying to be both and it's not doing How's it either. Because be well, it's, it's super campy. Again, the production design is so like like cool and weird because like in the in the office where the um, where he was hiding out, the hitman yeah. was hiding out, it's like all typewriters and it's yeah. like super classic. But yeah. then he's also got his cell phone. But then at at GCPD, they have like computers from 1995. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I'm just what? sort of like, I know you're trying to go for like a timeless thing, but like let, maybe let's make like a couple decisions. Yeah. And I feel like they haven't yet. Again, make, make it decide, this is how this world functions. Because if you, if you can decide, if you have rules for it, like yeah. any good fantasy, if you have rules for how it works, 
the rest of us will buy into it. And then we won't nitpick it because we'll be bought into the world and we'll let things that don't quite make sense slip right. over because we're invested in it. I would it. say like, you know, uh, comparing this to Flash is and isn't fair, but since they both started this season, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I love to compare them because the Flash, very quickly, it knows what its rules are. It yes. knows what function each of its characters serves and it knows its tone. Its tone is very, very solid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's segue into a show that we all enjoy. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, Flash. This episode, personally, I did not think was as strong as the pilot. Pilot, but I still very much enjoyed it. It was a little more campy than the pilot. There was one line in there about oh, oh being yeah. struck we, by lightning. We, we yeah. were all struck yeah. by lightning. Barry, I need you to shut the hell up for a second. You just you just defeated a cloning man who is very cool. Like he's a minor yeah. character. Yeah, and the effects yeah. were but, like shockingly well, seamless for that, CW. Yeah, oh, that's... for a TV show. Like, yeah. I mean, wow. They uh, when they did, there's a million of them coming after yeah. Barry. Yeah. They did something really cool. They made the the clones lower res, but they still use Barry slow mo running through them and then masked him in, yeah. so it looked more believable of him running through that. Yeah. I like that. I the, appreciate I, that. Well, I also like the the we right off the bat show that even though this guy's the fastest man alive, uh, he's still vulnerable. Mm -hmm. That if you get enough guys punching him in the face at once, the speed doesn't matter that much. Yeah. Also. Uh, very clear whether whether the way it's depicted depicted is accurate. I'm not a scientist, but he goes fast. They, they, there's again rules. We know how fast Barry runs at this point. Yeah, you know what I mean. There, there's there's limits that he has to he has to eat a lot, which is something that was introduced with Wally West in the comics and mm -hmm. used in the Justice League. Mm -hmm. I was also in the classic it just makes 90s sense. show. It makes sense. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's again you, you understand. That's right. Yeah. You understand. There, this is a world, and it's a fantastical world, but within this world, there are rules and yeah. things that have a certain cohesion to them. That's appreciated. Yes. Yeah. I like it a lot. I, Out of the minor characters, I have to say my favorite is Cisco. I like him a lot. Cisco's I thought he was cool. going to be very fun. annoying. He's mm -hmm. fun. He's yeah. like the kid that we all love because he's like, oh, he's got powers. I'm yeah. going to make a cool thing He's for excited him. like yeah. we're yeah. excited. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's yeah. the audience. But then also, Jesse L. Martin as Joe. So good. So he good. Is, I've he's the best many part of the show. He's too good for that show. <laughs> yeah. He's too that's, good for but the But that's flash. why the show works yeah. so well is he plays it with such real raw emotion mm -hmm. yeah. that it grounds everything else. Yeah. And it makes Grant Gustin be a better actor. It makes him better in the role. Runner up. Uh, Tom Cavanaugh. Tom Cavanaugh. Is, I did not know of his acting ability. Like I knew, I've seen him on Scrubs, seen him on yeah. other things, but wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he He's plays enigmatic him. really, really well. My um, favorite scene in the show was him and Jesse L. Martin. The one time they interacted mm -hmm. was like the best scene in the entire episode. Yeah, yeah. and the twist at the and end. The the, at the end. Uh, I, I, the twist at the end bothered me because, because, because Stag, of the comic book yeah, or... Stag relates to a character named Metamorpho. Oh and yeah. I wanted Stag to be around for that. I don't oh, know so why they, they killed him. This show, this shows. I don't, I don't. Why are you killing everybody off? You don't need to kill everybody off. Uh, the Spectacular Spider-Man cartoon did a good job about keeping, obviously it's a cartoon, That's a, but, yeah, but, it's a but it kept his villains around so that, so uh, part of the plot was, how do we imprison these people? Mm -hmm. Which at some point I imagine is gonna be a thing with Flash. Mm -hmm. Iron Heights is probably gonna be upgraded. I'm excited to maybe see an episode where John Wesley Shipp's character, his dad, has yeah. to deal with some of the rogues that Flash has put away. Oh, wow. Yeah. They they also, that'd be really on cool. Arrow, I don't think you, no, you haven't seen that. And on, on Hero, well, Hero, Arrow, yeah. they uh, introduced Supermax. The prison Ooh, that's on, right. on Lian Yu, where uh, where he was oh, trapped for that's five years. Right. They yeah. created like a just intense prison that but is right holding now it's only, the only for Deathstroke, which is good. He needs a prison prison. Yeah, he's uh, super strong, yeah. but you do need to throw. Do some you guys remember like yeah. like three or four years ago when there was that script circula circulating yeah. Yeah. for Superman? I'm, I'm hoping yeah. I'm hoping that they bring it back for the show for uh, for Arrow, one of yeah. the seasons of Arrow. That maybe he ends up in the. It was prison a Green again. Arrow yeah. movie, right? Yes. Yeah, it was yeah. a Green yeah. Arrow yeah. movie that took place entirely in Supermax. It was like Escape from New York. Mm -hmm. But with superheroes, it was supposed to be dope. But uh, uh, one of the things I hope to see, when you bring up Arrow, one of the things I think Flash would benefit from is there's a clear arc in Arrow going from Ollie basically becoming a human being again uh -huh. and, and learning to be a hero. Uh -huh. Barry doesn't have that, or as, as a human, need that. Like, he's fine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I would like to see something for, like, for Barry, Barry to, Barry to have an arc. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, see, but I would I would argue, and maybe you agree with me on this, Sam, mm -hmm. that I feel like there is an arc that's very much there, and it's it's it got founded in this episode where he didn't quite have the confidence mm -hmm. that he could be anybody. This is a guy who 
uh, was told he was crazy for years. Yeah. Who, for a year, he's a broken child. He's a broken from a, child since he was from a, a broken home. Yeah, exactly. He watched his mother be murdered by some freak thing that he couldn't explain, and his dad was in prison his entire life. And no one believed him for, yeah. for years. He's becoming his best self, and yeah. part of that comes from freeing his father. So yeah. I feel like those two things are very much united. Let's yeah. segue to Arrow, okay. yeah. briefly. Uh, um, uh, another great episode. Here's the, Flash. Part of the Flash's problem is it reminds me a lot of early Arrow before it found its land legs. Mm -hmm. And that's why I and faith. Now, yeah, and no, it's definitely yeah, better. it's definitely going to get better. But like Arrow, it's on season three. Like it's it's super confident it's about its mm -hmm. about its storytelling. Yeah. And it, this was a rough episode. It was really they didn't gloss over Sarah's death from from mm -hmm. last yeah, episode. Yeah. Everyone was affected. Everyone Everybody was deeply, yeah. deeply affected. I think uh, there was a we were watching it um, in the green room, and uh, I think that when they walk in, they're all like being all chummy, and then they walk in, and Sarah's bodies there with arrows and I think it was this collective like oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. shit this one's actually dead yeah, yeah she's not coming she's back she's super dead yeah nope. they like to kill off their characters yeah. a lot of their characters like yeah I see like the roster like get uh, smaller and smaller at the end of the season I'm like I think they're out of character I don't know who they're gonna bring in the next <laughs> season like then they brought back John Barrowman I'm like oh okay yeah, you got another yeah, person yeah, yeah. now uh, but uh um, but yeah she's not it doesn't look like she's gonna be coming back uh Ever. No. Yeah. No, she's she's super dead. She's buried in her old oh, grave. Oh, that's right. She's, yeah, she's buried in, yep. Her old grave. Uh, I do like seeing Laurel get tough when on the, on the whatever, the mo contractor, mobster, Yeah, whatever, whatever the guy with the cast. Yeah. That yeah. was Laurel's best scene that in was, three because it gave you faith because you know that like yeah. she's going to yeah. become the Black, Black Canary. Canary. So, yeah. Yeah. Because something I didn't she's mention. She's looking at that little, little leather jacket. jacket yeah. yeah, something I didn't want to mention last week, mm -hmm. uh, but now, I mean, hopefully you watched if you haven't. Uh, too late, we've already spoiled it. <laughs> um, uh, I was so depressed because Sarah's so much more interesting she's than She's so Laurel. cool. And so it's like, the wrong sister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this kind of gives a but cooler motivation for her to become. become well, and it's right. and yeah. I think I think it, it was a great it was a it was a great sign. Mm -hmm. Like that scene was a great sign for that character. Although, uh, uh, pro tip for you kids out there: if you've seen an arrow go through a window and murder somebody. Don't, don't walk up to the window! Don't stick don't your just face watch. in the hole yeah. like, to look. Like, like, oh, what the? Right, yeah. huh? Hey, what's going on out there? It's yeah. just uh, a contract killer murdering people. Let me stick a hole in the Did anyone else oh, see that? And speaking, huh? of not, and speaking of not killing villains, they didn't kill off Komodo, thankfully, because the second he started talking, he was, seemed super interesting. He was like <laughs> yeah. joking and shit. He was yeah. awesome. Oh, Simon LaCroix? Yeah. yeah. He was great. Yeah. He was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I was super annoyed at that motorcycle scene. because I was like, I at first, in the beginning, it was like, look, okay, we're going to pass. Yeah. Shit, hold on, we're gonna turn around. Okay, hold on, wait, wait, okay, okay, we're gonna pass again. My only Oh shit, we're gonna turn around one more time. You didn't like it when he <laughs> stood up on the skidding arrow. bike? That the, was cool. The skidding bike was, was cool. And the fight was cool. But I think the only problem was I, I thought it kept being Komodo firing arrows and arrow dodging them. Mm -hmm. It was. It, no, they flipped. It just oh, was hard that. to tell because <laughs> okay. they looked so similar. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, it was, it was, it was very. Dumb. It was. It, I think it was a great concept, and I think it was fun. The only problem with execution is I could not. I thought the same thing, uh, and I. Yeah. You just couldn't tell who was. Now, how did you guys feel? How did you guys <laughs> feel about seeing Tommy again? Ooh, Ooh fun, great. Yeah. Yeah, because he. I miss death, Tommy yeah, so his much. His death was a uh, shocking. You didn't see it, but it was. A, it was a shocking. I'm moment catching up. Season. Everyone, catching yeah. Up. It's. Um, it was a salt. When he died, you're like. Shit. Yeah, this shows. Yeah, yeah it's for real. real. Yeah. Like this is dealing with real problems. Well, and they kept the the that sh this show does a very good job of upping the stakes because you keep thinking like, how are they gonna top this? And then they do somehow. And it, when they it, killed his season, mom, I am that, thinking, yeah, that was crazy. But I think, um, I think this season's doing something smart because they even brought it up in the premiere. You know, we've had two major terrorist uh, terrorist attacks in as many years. So that it can't. This season can't end on a, like another crazy. The city's in peril. So I think what they're doing is I think it looks like all signs are pointing that this season's going to be more personal. Yeah, it's going yeah. to be Fia to Ollie. versus Ollie. Maybe I. Yeah. Well, and it looks cool like to see I was her at the end of the episode. Mm -hmm. By the way, yeah, I was wondering if it was Thea that shot Sarah, but now it appears that she, there she is very far away. In yeah. Mordo Maltese. Not, so we Corto don't. Maltese. And, and the other thing Corto is, Corto Maltese. <laughs> Mal, uh, Malcolm was also there. Which that doesn't mean was, that they couldn't have been there. There was like a day or two in between. Yeah, but I'm know. just saying it might it might not be. Uh, it, he might be ultimately responsible. In fact, uh -huh. he probably will be. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, he, he might not be directly responsible. I want. I'm excited to hear why that happened. Like, mm -hmm. is it to get to Arrow? Is it because something she did? Or yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That was cool. Laurel was great in this. Per a character that I always want more out of uh, is um, what's his name? John. Colton. 
Diggle? Uh, the the speedy. Oh, uh, uh, speedy. Uh, speedy. Roy. Yeah, Roy, Roy Harper. Roy. Yeah. They don't call him want... Speedy on this no, no. show. No, that he was his nickname. sister's name. Yeah, okay. yeah, I think they haven't given him his code name yet, but I think the showrunners have said it's Arsenal. Right, that's oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, I want okay. more out of his character because yeah. right now he's just a pretty face that wants he's to be. He's got a really cool costume. He has a cool yeah. costume. His costume's red, really cool. But, and like, but he he needs to develop more. Like this, I don't yeah. even remember him saying a line in the first episode. So now he has spoken. He said like one. He said a couple, <laughs> and he did some really cool parkour shit when yeah. he was trying mm -hmm. to break off. He the always thing. does yeah. cool parkour. Yeah, shit. Yeah, he was pretty cool. Oh, that was a great great scene when the one uh, cast guy before he was cast guy was trying to escape, and Eric just comes up and, and like, just punches him right in the dick. Yeah, that was pretty great. It was, like, yeah. Boom! Fuck you! I like cool arrow moments like that. So now, uh, now we get to. Uh, and also, uh, he doesn't need his voice changer because he can do a Batman voice. Yeah, just Batman fine. Cool. voice. Yeah. At the, and then at the, at the end of the flashback, he kidnaps uh, his buddy Tommy because they want him to kill him or whatever. Because Amanda Waller's a real fucking bitch in the past. Yes. Um, and uh, he, he finds a way around it by kidnapping Tommy, and I guess I don't. I don't really know how it fixes things, but whatever. Point is, he didn't have a voice changer. Stephen Amell has fine. a great Batman voice. <laughs> yep. I, and why I'm we're doing? To... Why we're doing the voice changer? Yeah, it's real goofy. Yeah. Good episode, and now we could move on to the one Marvel show we have. Yes, mm -hmm. Marvel's Agents of Shield, which threw down a great episode this week, I episode like four. This season so much more. It's really clicking on all cylinders, mm -hmm. and I feel like they've been very smartly and very efficiently moving along all of their plot lines, mm. especially the Fitz plot line, which yes. I, I want to open by talking about. Um, cause, uh, Fitz has had this brain damage and this huge lack of confidence ever since Ward betrayed them in the first season uh -huh. and left him to die. Um, and in and this- he's building himself back up and he's doing, yeah. the writers, oh God, they're doing a great job with they're, him. They're doing a great job with him and they very smartly have him in with everybody mm. and like help save everybody in this episode so that he's no longer a loner, that he's no longer talking to Ghost Simmons, which uh -huh. I am tired of Ghost Simmons. Really? Already. Oh, I'm okay I with don't Ghost need Simmons. any more Ghost Simmons. I'm uh -huh. glad he's hanging out with with uh, with Mac and, uh, and Hunter talking about how, you know, he liked a girl, but she didn't return his feelings. And they're like, oh, that's... I like how awkward yeah. it was too. They hand him a beer and they start talking, he interrupts them with this really personal story and then like retreats back into his like, yeah and they're like um the bottle. <laughs> that's rough man she she didn't deserve you yeah. yeah and he's like he's a part of the crew mm -hmm. now who is the british guy the asshole hunter hunter okay when he had to asshole. grab when yeah. he grabbed hunter to do like the electrical work mm -hmm. and he's like no 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 like he gets yeah. so mad and he's actually has like he's clear he's able to think and he's get he's determined mm -hmm. i love that and they like made him important i love that they used the face um like Mask face changer, I'm like, is this, soldier. is this, or, well, I thought it was, uh, it's like the Mission Impossible. Yeah, thing. with the, 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 the face shaving maker. thing, yeah, yeah, the face maker. But they, it was a nice throwback to Winter Soldier because mm -hmm. they had that technology and they never used it in any other Marvel movie ever. Yeah. I'm like, that's important, man. Yeah, so that's Hydra has it again. Useful. Yeah. yeah. Um, and May versus May was great. Yeah. And the, the way they used special effects were very good. Like, either they found like a very good stunt double for May, mm -hmm. but the way it, they cut it and they edited it, made it yeah. look like it was the faces were the same. It was, it was excellent. Yeah, yeah, Melinda May versus Melinda May. One in a very nice dress, the other in lingerie. I'm not one for objectification. I'm a big fan. It was cool. Um, <laughs> Ming Na is in her 40s. You uh, you don't have you don't care. She is. I got to be honest. I did not have time to watch Agents of Shield it's this okay. week. It's all right. It's okay. But you guys are making it seem like I should. Because one was, thing, my favorite yeah. thing this season has been Fitz. Yeah, so Fitz more is Fitz great. Time, more Fitz, Fitz is Fitz great. Time. Yeah, um, Talbot is great. Talbot I love is Talbot's great. Character. I love uh, the continued like evolution of his relationship with Coulson. Mm -hmm. And there was it was just a great Coulson May episode mm -hmm. where you know Coulson is undergoing these changes because of the alien blood in him, mm -hmm. and uh, and he's trying to get her to like <laughs> commit to a, a plan that if like if things go badly, he wants her to kill to kill him, mm -hmm. and she refuses, and she's like, she's a I, great friend in this episode. Yeah. she's a human in this episode, which is important. Which is really important mm -hmm. because she can often come off as kind of wooden, mm -hmm. but like to have her have that really strong emotional core and then to come out and reveal, no, I have a plan already, you know, that uh, I'm gonna get you this, got a plan. take you out to the Australian Outback, I'm gonna take care of you, I'm gonna make sure that you're safe. And he's like, that's the sweetest, nicest thing that anyone's done for me. And now I'm gonna give you an order to not do that. You're gonna kill me. Uh -huh. All in all, it's been a great week for superhero TV. Certainly Gotham's has. still disappointing, but three great episodes from mm -hmm. the other shows. Let's talk about news. Well, hold Ooh. on, and Constantine comes out next week. Yes. Constantine, right? Jesus. So, that, so yeah. yeah. So anyway, that that's another shows. thing to figure out. So uh, speaking of Marvel, <laughs> yeah. uh, last week we got first images of Daredevil. Yes, Ooh. Charlie Cox, and he looks he looks pretty cool. Uh, the, 
my comic knowledge is is expansive, but it has its limits. Mm -hmm. uh, I did not know about Frank Miller's Man Without Fear run with Daredevil, so when I saw the new costume, I immediately thought of the made-for-TV Lou Ferrigno Hulk movie that Daredevil showed up in, because it looks pretty similar. Mm -hmm. uh, but they apparently said in the New York Comic Con footage that it's a work, like he says in, in a clip from the show, that it's a work in progress, so I'm imagining part of the arc is at the end of the season, he uh, has he'll have the, the traditional Daredevil yeah. suit. Okay. No, it's one okay. of the most celebrated arcs in all of Daredevil's history, and yeah. if you if you haven't read Frank Miller's The Man Without Fear, you need to, you need to read it. Sounds pretty it's, good. It's I'm great. excited for this, because I I um I heard one of the one of the execs over at Marvel when they met the lead actor uh, a couple years back they're like we need him to play Daredevil and this is prior to Marvel getting the rights back to Daredevil and they're like well we've got to wait so for they were that. thinking so, about it years before they, they even had an opportunity about him specifically wow. playing Daredevil and don't didn't even know what they were gonna do with it but they knew they were gonna have him do it and wow. the thing mm -hmm. that excites me in obscure comic book news is that uh, Rosario Dawson's playing Night Nurse I love which Rosario is a lot of fun Dawson. for me so I imagine I, I think they're positioning her to be the Nick Fury of this street level Right, because she's going to be on Luke Cage and on Daredevil. Yeah, because Luke Night Nurse, uh, traditionally in the comics, she bandages up superheroes, mm -hmm. like which is a great fucking concept. Mm -hmm. And so I imagine a bunch of people are going to be ending up on her doorstep between these four series that they're launching. Sure, and it's yeah. got to be a meaty part for Rosario Dawson to take it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah. also probably a lot of money. Um, <laughs> also, uh, which I think you did a white wall on. I did, and you can check that out right here. Ding! Uh, the, Robert Downey Jr. was announced as joining Captain America 3. He's going to be playing Tony Stark in it. Is that official? Sorry, uh, I wanted to know. It is, it, it is in talks. Variety, their sources are rarely wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have so many details that I have to imagine that it's on point. Yeah, uh, yeah so he for about $40 million, he is going to join uh, Captain America 3 and kick off... Uh, supposedly the Civil War storyline or the cinematic universe's version Love of it that, where yeah. they're gonna take the skeleton and trim away a lot of the controversial stuff probably, probably. Um, yeah. you know America is having such a love affair with Tony Stark they're not gonna make him a huge a-hole well, yeah cuz that's that was one of the disappointments of the Civil War comic is it really it wasn't so much it was intended to be like oh what side are you on both sides are kind of right and what it became was man Iron Man's a huge dick and he's mm. basically a villain now. hopefully they can yeah. fix that I've been yeah. listening to a podcast Podcast, like just explaining it to me because I would like to learn about the mm -hmm. Civil War as quickly as possible. It yeah. seems like an interesting arc yeah. for them to do. I don't know what it's going to be like because you don't have enough people in this well, universe. Like, you, you're starting to with the Defenders and the Netflix shows. I'm wondering, I know that there's rumors that Marvel has been trying to get uh, a deal with Sony to use Spider-Man Spider -Man again. again. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering if that falls through if they will use Daredevil in the Spider-Man role because Spider-Man plays a big part. And, or nope, yeah. man. Because, and the uh, thing is, uh, a big part of what made that uh, Spider-Man... In the comic book, Spider-Man reveals that he's Peter Parker yeah. to a wide in audience. In Civil War. And, and it was like War. it was the most iconic moment of yes. Civil War. But uh, they had to retcon it because it kind of completely ruined Peter Parker as a character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, however, uh, another character in the Marvel comics that had his identity revealed and actually uh, created a lot of very interesting stories was Daredevil. Okay. Uh, I didn't, that happens in Civil yeah, War. It, well, he didn't. His 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 identity was not revealed in Civil War. It was part of his own comic under. Um, I want to say it was Brian Bendis's run. Mm -hmm. um, Love Brian. Bendis. Uh, but it, as opposed to where. Peter Parker revealing his identity, kind of short-circuited the character. Mm -hmm. The uh, da Daredevil writers were able to get a lot of mileage out of his reveal, mm -hmm. and so it would kind of make sense if they kind of like switch horses in that case. Well, here's the thing, and I'm just going to throw Wouldn't this be terrible. out. Wouldn't no. be terrible. I'm going to throw this out as a theory. If they are able to get Spider-Man, the good idea uh, that would stem from it, first of all, it would bring interest back to the Amazing Spider-Man movies, which have been thoroughly underwhelming. Yeah. And, and not uh, making a lot of money. Not making a lot of money. The next movie is going to be a Sinister Six movie. It's not even going to be a Spider-Man movie. Yeah. What this offers, if they do go through with it, is when they finally do Amazing Spider-Man 3, mm -hmm. they only have to do one movie where he's exposed and he's just fighting all these people who now know who he is mm -hmm. and can get at every important person in his life and it becomes a desperate race against time to stop this cabal of villains. That sounds really cool to me. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, because this series of films wasn't the greatest success, it Ooh. gives them a way to go out on a serious action-packed high mm -hmm. and not have to worry about retconning it and like just start over. But the problem I don't think Marvel would let that happen because that's supposed to connect to their universe. So that's uh, the Spider-Man. That, that is then the Spider-Man. Their Sister Six is supposed to. Well, I mean, if if hypothetically they they make this thing happen, 
and they have Peter Parker's reveal, then if if they Sony can go out on a high note, but then Marvel stuck with saddled with the Spider Man. I have no Sony. idea how they would introduce Spider Man into this universe. That's they what already I'm saying. fought like, New York. They already the, destroyed New York. What the does hell is he matter? doing? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You you fucking have like uh, Tony Stark and and Bruce Banner having a chat on the on the fucking Baxter Building. Yeah. At, or no, 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 Baxter Building's Fantastic Four. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, having having a discussion on on Avengers Tower, and then just a web shoots up over their heads, and he fucking leaps down. People would go bananas. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Mind. Wait, what's the what's the project in Marvel where they have they can go to the other universes? There's something in the comics like that. I know. Well, honestly, like that. I think this is a good segue. It's the multiverse, but yeah. uh. uh Speaking of the multiverse, yes. we now have confirmation that uh, the TV shows are separated, the DC TV shows are separated from the DC movies because of this huge announcement of all the movies DC's putting out. And, and the casting of The Flash, yeah. played by Ezra Miller. That's uh, such an early who's, casting. Yeah, who's best uh, known for uh, You Need to Talk About Kevin. Which is the so fucking depressing. So depressing. And he's a he's an amazing actor. He's not the person I would have chosen for The Flash. No, though. especially since he's only a year older than Sam. Um, but yeah, uh, he's a young boy. Yeah. He's, a, he's a young boy. And why would you, why would you make this awesome Flash TV show that would be on? Let's let's hope to be on for four years until yeah. that Flash movie comes out. Mm -hmm. And then you have a Flash movie, and you're like, oh, both Flashes are pretty good. Or yeah. the TV one is great, and Ezra Miller kind of screws it up. I Don't just see or that Ezra happening. Miller is great, and then you know Grant whatever. Doesn't Grant's live up. Yeah, the I, I, Grant and, Gustin is not a movie star. But I think the the benefit that they have is that if they decide they want, it gives everybody freedom mm -hmm. to do what the fuck they want. But also, if they want to have a big co crossover, there's a little thing called Crisis of Infinite Earths where all the multiverse went in. So they have a storyline that they can mine from that has 15 is Batman DC? and Flashes. This oh, okay. is DC. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, both DC and Marvel have a multiverse. And basically, like every versions. single universe has a version of everybody. Yeah. Or not every single one, but. Uh, there's a potential that just like you have TV Flash and Movie Flash in the same movie together if you're doing this big crisis <laughs> on the But if they can't do which one is like Superman an amazing movie, I don't expect it. It's amazing, it's just, but it's also a mess. Yeah, crisis. But, it is. But also the other thing that, that I think interests me more is that what that might mean is that we can get a TV Batman on Arrow. Wouldn't be too bad. Uh, maybe around season six, ratings are flagging a little bit. What are we going to do? Already they already said Wayne Enterprises. The, the Batman, the, theoretically, Batman and Superman exist in this world. So when we've been talking about a, a TV Justice League with like Arrow and Flash and mm -hmm. Adam, it could also hypothetically include Batman and Superman. And what I would least like them to acknowledge is that there is are there are these A-listers out there that in this world, like we don't even if we never see them, mm -hmm. Arrow and Flash to acknowledge that like. Oh man, did you hear about Superman? Yeah, it was crazy. And then they just move on with our lives. See, I would love that, especially if they were like, they had a chip on their shoulder and it's just like, you know, they're off saving all these places and we gotta mop up our own city. They would yeah. never come to Star City. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I love yeah. that. Wait, they got Constantine, they got Arrow, Flash, Gotham, Nightwing, yeah. or Teen oh, Titans. Teen Titans or on whatever. TNT. Mm -hmm. Like, that's. Um, and then Supergirl and Teen yeah, Titans Supergirl. on TNT. TNT there's Fox. <laughs> What? Could you yeah. imagine that? Oh no. <laughs> so, but right now, uh, no, we've, no, no. we've covered the shows that we already have. And so much more. Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, yeah. you know, so, where do we uh, go with that? Yeah, so folks, um, let us know down in the comments below what you thought of uh, the shows this week. Uh, and whether or not you're looking forward to Constantine, you can join in the conversation next week at the hashtag SH, SH Roundup. Uh, I'm Matt Lieberman. I'm Sam Basher. And I'm DJ Wooldridge. Yeah. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Tell your friends. We want to keep doing this show. Yeah, tell your friends. Share it's, with we people. put in a lot of work. We watch hours of TV to be able to do this. So uh, <laughs> and it's, it's hard work. It's, yeah, it's, hard it's work. such hard work, and it's definitely TV. We How many be flashes do we want? Yeah. How many Batmans do we want? I want, I want all the 20. Batmans. <laughs>